Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this short first impressions video, we're going to take a brief look at WordPerfect X8, or version 8, which is by Corel. It's a word editing software suite, similar to Microsoft Office or LibreOffice. And if you take a quick look at the interface that we have on screen here, you'll notice that most of the tools included in Corel are very similar, if not borderline identical, to the other tools that you find in those previously mentioned software. So we're not going to focus this video so much on things like lists and creating underline, but rather talk a bit about the tools that are actually different in Corel WordPerfect. So immediately upon launching into WordPerfect, one of the things I noticed that I like a lot is you can see these guideline bars for setting margins. Uh, normally you would go into some preferences menu to set the margins, and of course you can still do that. But here, if you want to make the text start higher on the screen, all you need to do is hover over these guideline bars and drag them up, and you can see the exact uh, length of the margins that you're setting. So just like that, we can set a half inch margin on the top of the screen. Likewise, you can go down to the bottom of the page to set the margin down there as well, if that's something you desire. And you'll notice that I've actually separated this particular document into a three-column layout. We'll talk a bit more about that in a second. So just like with the page margins, you can also affect the column size and gutter length, which is the space between columns, um, by going over to the edge of one, dragging it, and stopping when you've got it at the right point. Likewise, we can go over here to the left and mess around that uh, with that as well. Now one thing you'll notice is that these three columns aren't taking up everything on the page. If we actually go outside of it, then we're back to a standard document with just one column. And we can adjust the margin for just that. So if I drag this over to 0.25 inches, that actually affects everything from this point onwards and not the initial part of the document. But if we were to get rid of all the columns or just start a new document, then we can adjust the margin and have that set for everything by default. One more major difference about the standard typing inside of Corel is that normally you have to type a bunch of spaces if you want to start typing from somewhere that's not at the beginning of the line. But here in Corel, you can actually just click anywhere and start typing from wherever you just clicked. So title of the book, you could do that. And say that you are trying to go for centering the text over there, you can still center it by clicking on this menu over here, going to center, and that'll take care of that for you. But it's interesting that you can start typing from anywhere you want. That's something that's not really a common feature. Now, one of the things I think is really cool and will be pretty useful for writers, actually, who are trying to find a new way to say something, is that there's this menu up here, which is called Prompt As You Go. And as you start typing things, they'll give you alternative suggestions or spelling corrections for whatever you're trying to type. So if I type H-E-L and I click on this, it's going to give me some options like hell. Maybe I was going for hell, but maybe I don't actually want to use the word hell. And instead, I switch that to netherworld or underworld or infernal regions. And if we go over here to title and we click on the drop down, you can see that it's not always just one word. You can also get small phrases out of it, like give a title to. And just in general, I can see prompt as you go being very useful for getting synonyms without having to look it up in a dictionary as normal. So if you're writing anything like an ebook, there's a good chance that you're going to be playing around with different fonts, several font styles for the title and different ones for the paragraphs. Maybe you have a quotation specific font style. There's a tool up here called Quick Fonts, which allows you to see basically font setting groupings that you've previously used. Of course, it defaults to a few here, but if you go ahead and you start changing fonts, it's going to remember which ones you used previously. And if you're switching between fonts a lot, this menu might be useful for you because you can just quickly switch to what you actually need that you've already previously set up. So title of the book, now it's in Courier. Now, to do the same kind of functionality as quick fonts, you could create a style, which uh, most Office software does have the ability to do this, where you set up a style, it includes a font choice, font size, uh, possibly whether it's italicized or things of that nature, and then you would apply something like heading 2 to the title of your book, for instance. Uh, you probably create your own custom one. 
But as you can see, it applies certain attributes, namely the fact that it's bold up here to this title. It doesn't actually change the font in this case because the style doesn't necessarily need to change everything. Um, but the thing is, that would be to kind of permanently set up a style. And this would be more for if you are going to uh, use something in a couple spaces in your document and you don't necessarily want to take the time to set everything up. You just want to use some specific formatting that you just used um, and use it over again in kind of a quicker fashion. Now, an alternative way to get the same kind of functionality would be to go over to the styles menu. Um, and you can also create custom styles inside of your document, which are basically, as it says right here, predefined formatting. That can include things like font size, whether it's bold, italicized, underlined, what kind of font you're actually going to use for that style. And you can apply that to blocks of text or headings inside of your document, uh, which is kind of the standardized way that most Office software does things. But this quick, um, this quick menu is just an alternate way of doing the same kind of thing. Might be more useful if you don't want to create a permanent style within your document, but you just want to change the text in a few specific areas and then move on. Um, or if you forgot to create a style, you can maybe go back and kind of what's effectively this history menu and use that in another place. Now down here at the bottom, you'll notice I have a lot of open documents from document one to document nine here and some office software you would just have a completely new window for each document you open. But in WordPerfect, they've elected to have a tab structure. So you have one window in your system, and then you can tab between the documents, kind of like you would in a web browser. And you can see I'm going through some of the templates here that are included in Corel. And that brings us to the thesaurus and the dictionary inside of WordPerfect. So if I was to go ahead and type in a word here, such as volcano, we can double click on that word and it's gonna give us information about it straight inside of the program. Uh, this kind of technology you would go and probably use an online thesaurus and dictionary, but it's more convenient when it's right in the program you're using. So we can see, noun, a fissure in the earth's crust through which molten lava and gases erupt. And you can click on it to get more information, words that are similar to it and what kind of type this is. And you can go ahead and click on the expansion button there to get a little bit more information. And then on the dictionary tab, we can see it's using the Oxford Dictionary. We'll type in a word here, such as monkey, and brings up the information here, a small to medium sized primate. You can also see over here on the left that we have a spell checker and a grammar checker as well, which are very standard to these kinds of programs. To access any of these tools, we go up to the tools menu and you can see spell checker, grammatic, the source, dictionary, including their hotkeys all up there for you to access. One other tool that caught my eye a bit is the perfect expert, which you can see up here at the top. If you open that up, it's got a wizard kind of style going on here where if you click on something, it gives you suggestions about what you might want to do for your document if you're trying to achieve something. So I'll go here and do a blank document. If you click on write a draft, it'll give you some suggestions such as creating an outline. And with that, it'll go ahead and create a list item menu for you automatically. Uh, it might be helpful if you don't know about all the tools inside of these kinds of programs. Like you might've missed that up here, you have uh, numbering, create numbered lists and outlines there. Um, or maybe you just prefer to kind of have a menu laid out more like this rather than remembering where all the functionality is. So for instance, you might get to the point inside of the perfect expert where you've created some list items by following along and then you want to move the list item inward. So rather than going through the program and figuring out exactly how to do that, you could just click on this drop down menu and hit N to move it over one. And then later on, as you go through this menu, you can check out other things like formatting and add a table which will bring up a menu and you can set the number of columns and rows in that table. And then later on, we can do things like come down here to the formatting menu, click on add a table, which will pop up a menu for you. Being able to set the number of columns and rows, we can hit create here. And that'll allow us to start typing in things here, such as headings for our table and the content underneath. 
So ultimately what the perfect expert menu allows you to do is perform the same kinds of actions you might find in all of the menus of WordPerfect, but having them kind of clumped together here and having another type of interface which may work out better for you. Of course, for things like creating a table, it wouldn't be too hard to just go to the table menu and hit create if you actually know where all of those things are. So I imagine that this particular tool is going to be most useful for beginners who haven't found where everything is yet. So that's going to be it for this first impressions video, taking a look at Corel Word Perfect X8. I've been Chris and I hope this video has given you an idea of whether Corel Word Perfect is a program you'd like to pick up or whether you would rather stick with something like LibreOffice or Microsoft Office know that there are different options out there depending on your needs and preferences. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in my future video content.